So the longitudinal is now perfect. Lateral is still about 0.7 degrees out, but getting closer. So now you can see, if I stand at the front, hopefully, the roof rack is pretty much level with the horizon, which is pretty awesome. If you were up there now, you'd have a nice flat night's sleep. Hello guys and welcome back to a sunny episode of Sam's Motor and Machine, just for a change in Ireland here. And in today's episode we're going to be doing something very exciting, which is fitting an air suspension controller to the Range Rover. But Sam, doesn't the Range Rover L322 already have an air suspension controller? Yeah, it does actually. It's got the factory built-in one which comes on every Range Rover L322 ever built. So this X-Lifter is basically an add-on air suspension air controller that's basically going to piggyback on the existing system. So the X-Lifter is going to give you additional features over and above what you get on the standard Land Rover system. So basically infinite uh, height adjustment. So instead of just having your standard three or four levels that are pre-programmed pre in the system, you're going to have basically unlimited up and down adjustability. And the feature that I'm most excited about on the X-Lifter is the self-leveling. So basically what that means is if you're camping or overlanding off-road, you're not always going to be able to find a perfectly flat car parking space for, to set your tent up or whatever. So the X-Lifter has got built-in inclinometers inside of it and it's going to be able to use the four-corner air suspension on the Range Rover to basically level the body of the car so that it's completely level longitudinally and laterally. And there's some other stuff that it does as well, like lifting and lowering the back of the car for, uh, for hitching up trailers and stuff like that. But overall, yeah, just really feature-packed and yeah, can't wait to try it out. So let's get it installed. So let's take a look inside the box and see what we get. So instructions, manual, calibration instructions that is, and obviously loads of stickers as well, it looks like. So then here's the actual unit itself. This is our ES unit, which is gonna be installed in line between the existing um, ES controller and the rest of the car, the wiring system. And then this is basically our little uh, wireless control unit that's gonna sit at the front of the dash and enable us to interface with the system and do all of the cool functions. Uh, this basically just needs 12 volt power. This comes with a cigarette lighter on it already, but I think what I'll do is probably cut this off and go for a permanent wired in solution somewhere uh, in the dash of the Range Rover to make it a bit neater. And this is obviously our pass-through loom here. One end's going to plug into the EAS unit and one end's going to plug into the existing loom and then this will connect into the X-Lifter. So yeah, pretty easy. Let's get, let's get it installed. So the main area of interest for us when we're installing the X-Lifter on the Range Rover is going to be this panel in the boot here on the right-hand side. This is the compartment where the air suspension module lives as well as a load of other stuff in there as well. There's a big fuse box and on my car actually, I've been in here before and messed around so I've got a switch panel here and a couple of relays for running my work lights on the back and a few other bits and bobs here. I've got some USB outlets that I installed in the back so my car's actually got a bit more complexity back here than most of them will um, but it shouldn't have any effect on us installing the X-Lifter so let's get the panel off and have a look what's inside. So let's pop this guy out and then as I said on mine I've got extra wiring back here that I'll need to disconnect so just a couple of Deutsch connectors that I put in to make it nice and easy. And that's the back side of that. If you guys haven't seen the video where I installed this, I'll put a link up above. So inside this panel looks a little bit scary uh, at first glance, but it's not really that bad at all. Um, this is the main fuse box for the rear part of the car. This is actually called the central junction box, I believe. Um, I'll double check, and make sure I'm right on that, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what the name of this is. Um, so we're taking out this whole panel, or we're not taking it out completely, we're just gonna lay it forwards to access the back of it. But to do that, we've got three seven mil headed screws that we need to take out. Um, this one here I'm actually using to hold these uh, relays. You guys won't have these in your car. Um, these are for my work light and reverse lights that I've added up on top. Link in the description if you haven't seen that video. I'm using an impact gun, you don't have to do that either. You can just do it the manual way. Uh, we don't want those to go flying. Now I should say in the manual, it does say you can disconnect the negative uh, battery terminal around the front um, if you want to, but it also says that it doesn't have any effect. It won't generate any error codes or anything like that. It's just down purely down to personal preference. Uh, personally, I don't really want to take it off if I don't have to because it resets all the settings on the car, like all of your radio settings, etc., etc., etc. So we'll just be doing it with the battery connected. It won't have any effect, as I said. 
So that's my relays and a little earth connector there, which I need to remember to uh, reconnect in a minute. So now we just basically want to move this panel out so we can get to the back side of this where the loom is. Now on the 2010 to 12 Range Rover L322s, you've got an extra module here, which is the adaptive damping module, which you don't have on the earlier cars. So it makes it a little bit more difficult to get this uh, panel out and turned around, but still not too difficult. So something else I'm gonna do just to make it a little bit easier is disconnect this uh, wire here from the Telestart module, which is your remote fuel burning heater and just pull that out of the way. I'm just gonna disconnect this little connector up here as well, which I think is for the fuel door um, at the top there, so I'm just going to disconnect that as well. That gives us a little bit more room to manoeuvre. We should be able to get to the back side of the EAS module here, which is what we want to see. So with that flipped around, we can unplug the outside connectors on the EAS module, the existing one. Like that. We don't need to touch these two. Then we can take our new X-Lifter loom plug that in how it should be and you just want to make sure that these go in all the way they're quite a wide connect with lots of pins so we want to make sure that they've gone in flush all the way back down so that leaves us with the two uh, female connectors that can then join up with the original loom here so this one into there Make sure that goes all the way home again. And then the same with this one here. Like that. So that's our pass-through loom installed and this is the connection for the X-Lifter. So now we've got our pass-through loom connected to the original air suspension module here. Um, and we've got our little connector here ready to go into the X-Lifter module. So all we want to do now really is tidy up this loom just to make this as neat as possible. Make sure it goes back together nice and neat. And we want to cable tie it in such a way that this connector is going to end up on the right hand side ready to connect to the X lifter unit when we spin this back round again and bolt it back into place. So now we basically want to spin this back round into place. And the extra connectors and cable that we've got back here kind of want to tuck behind this uh, ventilation box at the bottom here. With the 2010-12, it's definitely a lot more difficult to get this back into place because of this ECU here. We have to kind of tuck this up into the top corner first, then lift the rest of it into place, tucking those cables down the back as you go. So that's roughly back where that needs to go now. You just want to make sure that all of your looms aren't trapped or rubbing against any sharp edges in here. Um, obviously that's going to cause all kinds of problems if that happens. But yeah, that's all looking pretty good. So what I'm going to do is reconnect all the wires that I disconnected here, zip those bolts back in with that panel, and then we're going to get onto the next stage, which is fitting the X-Lifter unit itself. But first, a word from our video sponsor this week. So this unit's all secured back into place and I've connected all of the connectors back up again. Don't worry about these, these are my additional cables like I was talking about before. They'll go back on 
very shortly. But now it's time to basically install the X lifter unit itself. So the connector's on top, and although the writing is the other way up, you think it would go that way around, it actually needs to go in this way around. So there's a very specific position that the instructions have outlined for this uh, X lifter to go in. So this is the position they've pretty much outlined for it to go. The top of the X lifter in line with this line here, and then the right hand side of it in line with the middle of the second uh, square at the top here. So quite a specific position. And I think that's basically just to allow enough space for the cover to go back on again once you're all finished. So let's peel our 3M tape. And then get it into the position that we want. Which is gonna be just about there. So that is well stuck on there. And it's pretty important that we get this box fairly close to level because this is the box that actually contains our inclinometers that can be used for leveling the Range Rover afterwards. They will calibrate once we go through that process in a minute, but I, I would say it's probably pretty important to get it not too far away from uh, the, the true uh, level position. So now we can just connect this up. Straight away, we have green lights on the box. And now the green light is flashing continuously, which is what it's supposed to do. So that will continue flashing forever, basically, now. So there we go, that's the installation done, that's the hard part done, and it wasn't really that hard at all if I'm honest. Um, it'll be even easier on the pre-2010 L322s that don't have that adaptive damping module getting in the way, but um, yeah, really nice simple install. So this module here, looks like a tiny little old MP3 player or something like that, uh, is actually the control unit for the X lifter. So this is wirelessly communicating with the module that we just installed in the back there, and all it needs to work is this 12 volt power supply. So. So Xlift obviously supply this with the 12 volt cigarette lighter fitted here, uh, which I'll use for testing. But I think in the future, um, what I'm gonna do is cut this off and then I'll use a permanent 12 volt feed or a ignition 12 volt feed uh, from somewhere here in the Range Rover to make a nice neat install. Uh, but this is quite handy, I guess you could unplug it and plug it back in when you're not using it. Um, uh, but yeah, so all it should need to do is plug it into our cigarette lighter. Turn the ignition on. And hopefully you guys will be able to see, I'll take this off here, but the X-Lifter is now booted up and the screen is showing us some information. So now the X-Lifter is connected and this is connected wirelessly to the X-Lifter module at the back. All we've got to do is tell it what type of vehicle it's installed in because this type, this module actually works with the, obviously the Discovery 3, Discovery 4, Range Rover Sport and various models of Range Rover L322. So we will go through into settings, calibration, change car type, and then we're gonna head down to Range Rover 2010 to 12. Enter on that. We want right-hand drive, I'm not sure what difference that makes. But now you can see on the screen, hopefully, that the car is selected correctly as the Range Rover 2010 to 12. This is actually a really nice little screen. I'm not sure if it's coming across on the video, but it's really clear um, and it can kind of moves nice and responsively as well. So yeah, pretty nice little screen. So we're currently on my driveway, which is gravel, not ideal for calibration, but it's fairly level. So we're actually gonna run the first calibration here. Um, ideally, we'd do this on a nice flat piece of tarmac, but for testing purposes, I'm just gonna do it here. And then once I get a chance, I'll do a proper calibration on a nice level piece of tarmac. But for now, we'll just go through, press start, and it's now calibrating using those inclinometers in the module that we fit in the back there to, uh, to find its level point. So 100%. And now it's doing the inclinometer by the looks of it, going through. And there we go, X-Lifter calibrated. 
continue. So there we go, that's that calibrated and that's the X-Lifter display as it will be during normal operation. So that's basically the home screen of the X-Lifter there showing you your current lift mode and this is a kind of a visual representation of where the height sensors are on each corner so it kind of gives you an indication where your wheels are up or down so quite cool. If we click to the left I've got compressor temperature which is pretty cool very useful to be able to just access that you know whenever you're driving you can just see if your compressor is working hard and it might give you uh, you know an early warning as to whether the uh, compressor is working overtime indicating a leak so that's really useful and then we've got some other settings in here extras uh, trailer assist this is going to be for lifting the back end up in the air um, but leveling is the one that I'm interested in so if we head into here we can see that's showing us that we're basically at zero at the moment because this is where I calibrated the car so so if we cycle through all of the uh, built-in programs in this, it looks like we've got, going from the bottom, super drop, minus 35, one inch drop, highway drop, minus 15. So that might be useful if you're doing a lot of motorway miles, you can drop the height of your range by 15 millimeters, which is something similar that the old P38s used to do once you went over 50 miles an hour for a certain period of time. And I think the L322 does actually do that, but only once you're over a very high speed, like 100 miles an hour, something like that. So. Uh, this gives you the option to do that at a lower speed which is quite useful so then obviously zero disengaged aesthetic lift plus 15 millimeter now this is something i'm probably going to be using most of the time um, with my bigger tires on the l322 uh, as you guys will see it looks a lot better with a slight lift on it as well so that's why we call that an aesthetic lift just to uh, basically make it look a little bit better and we've got a one inch lift off-road so this is actually a very useful setting because it, this will allow you to have the Range Rover at plus 55 millimeters which is off-road height but you can do that at all speeds with the X-Lifter so so usually if you just press the up button on the Range Rover suspension controls there to go into off-road mode if you travel over 35 miles an hour the Range Rover will flash up on the dashboard to tell you to slow down or the vehicle will lower now that's obviously for safety reasons, the Range Rover doesn't want you going too fast with it jacked right up in the air, that makes very good sense to me, but there are quite a few situations where you might want additional ground clearance whilst you're travelling at higher speeds than 35 miles an hour. So for instance, if you're travelling at high speed on a dirt road, you might just want the suspension jacked up a little bit higher than normal just to give you a little bit of extra ground clearance. Um, with the X-Lifter, you can do that. You can do high speeds and off-road height at the same time. It's pretty cool. And then above the off-road height, we've got Skyrocket, so plus 75 millimeters. Now this would be close to the top of where I'd want to put the air suspension uh, springs on the Range Rover whilst driving. You'd have to be pretty careful not to top the suspension out too much using this setting. Um, but if you really needed that extra ground clearance for clearing an obstacle or something, this could be extremely useful. But as I said, for me, I'm probably gonna run around most of the time in the plus 15 mode. So the car is currently at standard ride height. So this is the factory Land Rover ride height. Um, and now I've just put it into plus 15 here on the X-Lifter. So when I close the door, I should re-level to the new 15 mil higher ride height. I can just see it raising very slowly at the back there. It hasn't got to go very far. 15 mil isn't that high. So let's try the next setting up, which would be our one inch lift. Actually, let's go all the way up to off-road. So we're now set to 55 mil off-road and you can hear already the range is lifting up and that's working pretty nice. So there you go the range is now sat at off-road height but as far as the Range Rover is concerned it's still at standard ride height so you can now drive this car at any speed you want while suspension is in off-road mode which is really cool. And we can see there our compressor temperature has risen up because the car has been lifting up and down a little bit um, and it gives you even a little graph here so you can keep with keep an eye on the temperature uh, of the compressor as you're driving very cool so that's pretty awesome we've now got millimeter control over the height of the range rover from a button on the dashboard so next what i'm going to do is take the range rover around into the garden and we're going to simulate an off-road camping situation so i'm going to put the range rover at a bit of a jaunty angle we're going to see if the X-Lifter can level it out. Let's give it a go. So here we are, we've got to our imaginary camp site for the night. 
the campsite's lovely and green and lush, but as you guys can see, it's not terribly level. So you can imagine if we had a roof tent up there, which we hopefully will very soon, you'd be rolling out of bed all night long, which wouldn't be ideal. So let's see if the X-Lifter can do some self-leveling action. So from the main menu of the X-Lifter, I'm gonna go right into leveling, and then you can see that it's, it's showing me the uh, inclinometer levels for longitudinal and lateral. We're leaning over to the left a fair bit at the moment. And we're gonna hit start leveling and see what happens. There we go. Let's see if it's adjusting. Okay, so I can feel the rear and the right-hand side of the truck is dropping. I can definitely feel that. We're getting closer to level. We're not quite there yet. Wow, this is amazing, guys. So longitudinally, we're pretty level now. We've just still got a slight slope uh, right to left. But we're dropping slowly on the right-hand side. And the pump is running. So I'm guessing it's going to start bringing up the left-hand side now as well. This is just awesome. As you guys watching from the camera outside there. Yeah, we're down to 2.1 degrees lateral. What a fantastic system this is. So it's still trying to equalize that uh, lateral leveling. I can still see the back end is moving slightly. We're getting pretty close to level right now. So it's going for another round by looks of it. It's not quite happy to, to it's not quite happy with where where it got to. So it looks like oh here you go. So it looks like it's doing a fine tuning uh, round now, getting us even closer to zero. So the longitudinal is now perfect. Lateral is still about 0.7 degrees out, but getting closer. dashboard did just flag, flash up and say we're in extended mode, I'm guessing because the rear left spring is pretty extended right now. So it looks like it's settled out at about minus 0 0.6 degrees on the roll, which is pretty damn close to level. Let's have a look on the outside. So if I take my spirit level here now and look at the roof rack on the Range Rover, Longitudinally, it's absolutely bang on. Hopefully you guys can zoom in and have a look at that, but the spirit level is pretty much bang on. And then laterally, like it said on the screen, we're about 0.7 degrees out, so it could do with coming up a tiny amount, but I think we were more or less at the limits of the air springs on this side, so pretty damn good. And this is gonna be much more level than you could ever get it by placing rocks and stuff under the suspension of the Range Rover. And then the other thing that's gonna happen if you park up with a roof tent on top of a Range Rover is it, during the night, it will try and level itself. So um, normally the Range Rover will try and level the car so that all four corners are exactly the same. So that's leveling the body to the suspension of the car, basically. It's not leveling the body to the ground, which is what the X-Lifter is doing, giving you a, uh, a nice level body to sleep on. So with the X-Lifter, this isn't gonna try and re-level itself during the night. As long as your springs don't leak, which they shouldn't be, uh, the car will stay where it is. So that's another really nice bonus. But yeah, overall, I think this is a really cool feature. I'm definitely gonna be using this when we start using this as a camper with the roof tent round Ireland and then into Europe next year, hopefully. So yeah, overall, I think the X-Lifter is a really cool product. It adds loads of features to the Range Rover air suspension system that you might think should have been standard anyway. Seeing as the car already has four-way air suspension system and an electronic controller, why can't it self-level itself against the ground? But the fact of the matter is it can't do that unless you have an additional controller like uh, X-Lifter has produced here. So yeah, really cool little product. Now I need to mention this product was actually sent to me free of cost by X-Lifter, um, but it is another one of these products where I was the person that actually contacted them as opposed to the other way around. It's another one of these products where I saw it online and I thought I really needed to show it to you guys in a video, so that's what we did. And as it turned out, it's a really cool product. So yeah, happy I did so. So I wanna say a big thank you to Jan over there in Czechoslovakia. He's the guy that made this from scratch. Um, I think he did it over the course of about 
two or three years whilst working his uh, own you know, full-time job at the same time. I think he's an IT engineer or something like that. Um, so perhaps the, the programming side of things that you would need to make a product like this was a bit easier for him than it might be for somebody else. But yeah, overall still really impressive that he's managed to do that. Um, it feels like a really professional product, went together really smoothly. Everything, all the instructions are really good um, and it just worked seamlessly as soon as I plugged it in. So you can't complain at that. But yeah, really cool product and I'm sure I'm going to be using it a lot in the coming months and years. So yeah, hopefully if you guys enjoyed this video, you'll be happy to leave a like down below and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers for watching.